In this video, I'm going to discuss two key areas that can sometimes be overlooked in our lawn care program, and that is disease control and insect control. So let's get out of the weeds. Over the last few weeks uh, on my channel here, I've been really kind of getting into and hammering on watering our lawn and showing kind of what you're going to see as far as heat stress, uh, dormant lawns, kind of going all over the things that are simply just water. But some of you may have brown areas in your lawn or areas in your lawn that aren't doing as well that has nothing to do with how well you're watering. And some of the key issues it could be is you could be dealing with some lawn disease or you may have some insect problems in your lawn. Now, as we get into this beginning of summer period, this is the perfect time to start getting down both of those applications so that way you can help your lawn fend off any of the things that are trying to come against it. So beginning with lawn disease, now you go, you look out in your lawn, you see some areas that are discolored, not really sure what it is. Well, as you upon further inspection, you look a little closer and you start to see the blades of grass begin to have these different lesions on them, some different discoloration. That is a good sign that you're dealing with lawn disease. This is not heat stress. Um, this is something else going on here. And so that's a good sign that, hey, my lawn is sick with some kind of disease and I need to take care of it. Now your lawn is going to be more at risk of getting disease whenever we go into kind of transitional periods throughout our season. And so the first kind of key one that we get into is kind of going out of spring when we're getting cooler temperatures, more rain, and we go into summer as we're getting less rain and hotter temperatures. This helps to make the uh, conditions right to see disease in your lawn. Some of the common lawn disease that you're going to see are going to be summer patch, brown patch, red thread, dollar spot, rust, fairy rings. There's so many different types of lawn disease that there's no way I could simply cover them all because it's going to be dependent on where you live and your grass type that you're dealing with. To help you identify what disease you may have going on in your lawn, a good resource to use is to look up a turf grass extension site. And so one that I know has a lot of, of inf good information is the Purdue turf grass extension. And so as I'll show you here on the screen, you can look up articles that will show you good, really good pictures of the different lawn disease so you would easily be able to identify what's going on. Just compare what you're seeing in your grass compared to some of these pictures. So when it comes to controlling lawn disease, there's two types of applications that I typically like to use. The first one that I typically start the season off with is going to be with a granular application because I typically put this down right around the same time that I do my insect control and so I just like to keep it granular for this application. Then as the season goes along, if I have any other problems with lawn disease, I'll typically use a, a tank sprayer and then spray them by hand and then these is when I'll get into the liquids. So now whenever you go to the store, the thing to note is that just because there's several different uh, brands of fungicide, they may have different active ingredients. For example, in this bag here, the active ingredient is propiconazole, which also is this in this bottle here. And so I have a liquid form and a granular form of the exact same active ingredient. And so what's going to happen is why this is important is because over time, your lawn can develop a resistance to these fungicides. If you're always using the same group of fungicide and never changing it up year after year, time after time, the disease can get a resistance uh, towards these fungicides and lose the effectiveness. So whenever you're doing this uh, year after year with your disease control, it is a good idea to mix it up time after time. So typically as we go over, now as I look at the bag here, a lot of the times you're going to see them advertising protection for about a month is what you're going to see. And then they'll typically list some of what it controls on the front. But the thing you really want to do is flip it over to the back. And if you look up there where it says controls, it has the list out of all of the disease that it controls. And so when you look there, if you know what you're having based on 
your research, you can then find the fungicide that's going to best control what you do. And lastly, you can see there on how much to apply where there's a curative rate and a preventative rate. And so right there is going to determine how much you need to buy based off the size of your lawn. And so it also shows you kind of when to apply and it tells you kind of the days you need to wait in between different applications um, and the best times to apply. So you can learn so much just by reading the back of the bag. Now when making the determination between granular or a liquid application, a lot of times I base it off of uh, am I wanting to just do like a preventative cover my whole lawn, cover my bases application? Then typically I go with granular just because it's much faster for me. Now, if I see just a few areas in my lawn that are struggling a little bit with disease, that's when I'll go to the liquid form and I'll kind of more do spot treatments and not just a blanket coverage on my lawn. Now, moving on to insect control. The main insect that you're always going to constantly hear about when it comes to lawn insect is going to be grubs. You're going to hear grubs, 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 grubs. Everything seems like it's grubs, almost like every weed seems like it's crabgrass. Uh, whenever you talk about lawns, that's the one thing they know. The one insect people know is grubs, and the one weed people know is typically crabgrass. And so just know that when we get into insects in our lawn, we are not talking about just grubs. For me here at my lawn, a lot of the issue I have sometimes is with sod webworm. Um, and so that's another one that you can have issues with. And so right around this time is a perfect time to put down a preventative to get ready to target some of those pests that are going to damage the lawn. When it comes to lawn insects, sometimes it can be hard to tell if you even have a problem with them because oftentimes you don't even see the damage at certain parts of the season. For example, you may have insects in that damaging your lawn, but in the spring we get in cold temperatures, you're fertilizing your lawn and it's doing really good. And so your lawn is outgrowing the damage that these insects are causing. And oftentimes these insects are under the ground, so we're not really seeing them anyway. And so in order to really kind of tell if you're having a problem is to look for a couple key signs. For example, with grubs, if you start to see a dead area in your lawn of your grass is kind of dying, go over to, the, to that area and pull on it a little bit because what grubs are doing is they're eating the roots underneath the grass there. And so typically with grubs, the lawn's gonna pull up like a carpet. And so if you have a major problem with grubs, you're typically that's gonna be a lot of the sign you're gonna see. When it comes to like sod webworms, for example, a lot of the key sign that you're gonna see with uh, knowing sod webworms are gonna be coming is when you start to see the lawn moths flying in your lawn as you're either walking through it or mowing it. If you start going and seeing these uh, kind of grayish lawn moths flying around everywhere, those things are dropping eggs all over the place. And that could be a, is a key sign that you may be dealing, getting ready to deal with sod webworm. And so quickly on the life cycle of grubs, this time right now, as we're in this May, June period, we are looking at kind of the life cycle restarting for grubs. The beetles are starting to come out of the ground and they're gonna to begin to uh, lay eggs and that's gonna hatch into the grubs that are then going to start uh, eating on your grass roots throughout the kind of the end, towards the end of the summer through the fall. When it gets winter again, they're gonna dive deep under the ground until it gets warm again. And then they come up in the spring a little bit higher when it warms up. By this time, they're bigger grown and fat. They eat a little bit and then Right around this time again, they pop out as beetles and their cycle kind of starts again. And so right now at this time, you're kind of catching the cycle as it's getting ready to start again. So with that life cycle in mind, there are typically two types of kind of grub control applications that you see in the stores because most of the branding is going to be geared towards grubs. And you're going to see either a season long control or a 24-hour curative control of the grubs. Now the difference of those being right now is the time for a preventative because we're getting ready to start the new cycle. Now recently went to the store because I always think it's kind of a good idea to show you what I'm seeing on the shelf because this is probably very similar to what you're seeing. And as I walked down the aisle, I was just bombarded 
with literally like five or six different uh, bags of insect control, all kind of targeting, look very similar, but they have very different active ingredients and do very different things. So for example here, the one that I have today, if you look here, this is what I actually bought for my lawn. Now, if you just read this, it looks like it says, okay, six months control. And so, okay, so automatically you know, okay, this is a preventative. It's controlling it for six months. And so above the lawn and below the ground, and then it has some of these insects listed on here, one of them being grubs. You see the active ingredient down here. And if you look up this active ingredient, it is not very good against grubs. So this one here is actually gonna be probably a little bit better for controlling ants and spiders and a lot more of the things that are above the ground than what it is gonna be for grubs. And so if you're really just targeting grubs, this is not what you want. And the only way I really know that is by really taking a look at the active ingredient and seeing what's in the bag because labels can be very misleading. So now to really show you how bags can be misleading unless you really look on there. On the front it said six months use, but look here, the insects controlled for six months are all ants. And so it lists the different types of ants and those are the only thing that's controlled for six months. Then you have to look down here, insects controlled for three months. And right there you have a wide variety of insects that are listed there uh, for three month control. And then you go down here and it's like, oh, these are other ones that it could just, uh, control or kill and then you look right here grubs and the four stars and look what it says in vegetable gardens so right off the bat you go and you're misled on the front of the bag because it looks like it controls grubs for six months throughout the season then you flip the bag over and it's like oh yeah it kills grubs in your vegetable garden oh well that's useful for my lawn you know and so that's how you can easily get misled by some of these companies on their stuff. So it's really important to even just, you don't have to deep dive into this stuff and really know, hey, what are all the groups of insecticides and how they work and all that. You don't need to do that, but just know some of the active ingredients that you're looking for to make sure that you know what you're getting in the bag because you don't want to waste your money and waste an application and plus just put useless uh, fungicides or insecticides on your lawn that aren't really helping what the issues you have in your lawn. For me, I don't typically have an issue uh, with grubs. I've put down a grub control every year that I've pretty much lived here um, and so I've never seen a grub in my lawn or have had any kind of issues with them at all. And so I've, I think I've well and done knocked out the life cycle of anything that I would have taken care of. And so a lot of, for me, like I want to target some of the more uh, other things on that bag is, is what I'm looking for. And so what I bought here and have here, this is what I is going to be good for me. And so it may be very well good for you, but just make sure that you're buying something that's targeting the problems that you have in your lawn. So. It's gonna all just go down just like a fertilizer application. On the back of these bags, there's gonna be a spreader setting to just go and put it down just like you would fertilize. A few things to know with these applications is one, don't mix the lawn disease control with the insect control together in your hopper. Do your disease control first, then your, then your insect control or vice versa but do not put them together in the hopper you can do them on the same day but do not do them together in the hopper because you want to make sure your application rate goes down evenly across your lawn the next thing to know is that these need watered in directly after you apply them so do not wait make sure it's either going to be getting ready to rain or you're going to be running your irrigation or sprinkler uh, to get it watered in and you want to try to get it watered in with about a half inch of water this is going to help activate the ingredients in here and start to get the protection that you're looking for in your lawn and so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'll see you guys next time when we get out of the weeds into a beautiful lawn